the street fighting student from Monaco, Lily! Hello there and welcome to my Lily Guide. Before we jump into the video, I'm just gonna make a quick introduction. My name is Lenka and I am from Slovakia, so please excuse my English. I have been playing Lily for many years and this guide is great for beginners as well as for advanced players. If you aren't familiar with frame data and Tekken notations, the explanations will be linked down below in the description, together with timestamps. You can also treat this guide as an anti-Lily guide uh, because I will be mentioning ways of countering different moves she has as a lot of her moves work only against low-level opponents who don't have great defense and she, Lily is kind of a scrub killer online. And we don't want you to rely on online gimmicks now, do we? The last sections of this guide about throws and combos will not have voiceovers, only notations. I will go very much in depth into her combo mechanics because I think they are very important for Lily's gameplay, but it's up to you to decide how much you want to know about her combos. Timestamps for various combo mechanics of hers will be down below in the descriptions as well. And with that being said, let's jump into the video. The saying, great defense creates offense describes Lily's game plan in a nutshell. Generally speaking, she is a defensive character with good punishment. She likes quick tracking tools, safe launchers and counter hit launchers. The Lily player has to make up for the holes in her offense with great knowledge of the game, great defense and great movement. You can make the opponent whiff a lot with great movement and punish them for trying to attack you at the wrong time. Lily is known as a character that is strong in low and intermediate level Tekken, but weak in high level Tekken. Her strengths include built-in evasiveness, good punishment, her very evasive sidestep, she can step things most characters cannot, although sometimes she cannot sidestep things other characters can. And then she has decent Okizami, great range, and a wall game with many wall spotting moves and strong wall combos. Her combos overall are very versatile and easily adjustable to your needs. Her weaknesses include tracking issues, with her right side being the weaker side, a somewhat unsafe and slow move list, she has to take big risks sometimes for a mediocre reward, even her launchers are unsafe, she has no good fast counter hit tools, and she has hitbox issues as well. Her punishment is pretty good. For 10 frames, she has 1 2 for a for big frame advantage, or 2-4 for less range, but great damage and a knockdown. For 12 frames, she has 4-2-3 with huge range, damage and strong Okizemi. At certain ranges at the wall, she gets guaranteed follow-ups. One plus two is a mid option for those cases when you need a mid instead of a high. The knockdown has to be back rolled or Lily gets a free stun. For 14 frames, she has forward one plus two, but you will use this only when you specifically need a fast mid with good range. For 15 frames, she gets a launch with up 4 3 or a wall bounce with 3 1. 
For 16 frames, she gets a down for 2 with better range than her hop kick. And for 17 frames, she gets a Matterhorn for big damage but less range. Her wall standing punishment is decent as well. For 10 frames, she gets a duck jab. For 11 frames, she has a knockdown wall standing 4 with an inconsistent mini combo in the open with down 4. And a full crouch down for a 3 slide is safe on block afterwards if the opponent tech rolls. She gets a wall combo too. At 13 frames, while sending 1-2 is plus 8 on hit, just like her jabs, and occasionally you can finish the stream with while sending 1-2-4, or you can delay it for a knockdown with a guaranteed follow-up or a counter hit launch. For 14 frames, she gets full crouch down for 1. I'd use it only for a wall spot, otherwise just stick to wall standing 1-2 for more damage. For 15 frames, she gets a 4-3. For 16 frames, she gets wall standing 2 and wall standing 3, but wall standing 2 gives better juggles and picks up slides. For moves with pushback, she has forward 2-3, three, 3-1 three, for more range than forward 2-3, Although an exception here is the Bears forward 4-2, where due to their unique hitbox, a forward 2-3 reaches while 3-1 doesn't. Other ranged punishers are forward 4 and down forward 3 plus 4. Her whiff punishment is strong and easy as well. She gets 1-2, 2-4, back 1-4, one, forward 2-3, 3 1, down 4 3 plus 4, up forward 3, down forward 2, quarter circle forward 1 2. If you want to use 3 1 after a sidestep and you don't want to get a sidestep 3, press 3 plus 4 instead of 3 and a standing 3 will come out. This won't work in rage though. Let's go over her key moves. One jabs gives slight frame advantage on block and big advantage on hit. Lily's key moves are really slow, so jabs are a great way of starting her offense. They have fast recovery on whiff, so whiff punishing and crushing them can be difficult. Her 1-2 jab string is her best poke string. Only minus 1 on block, so you don't lose your momentum, and they are plus 8 on hit. At plus 8, her slow moves become very effective. A down 4 3 is unsteppable, forward 4 and up back 1 can't be interrupted nor stepped. Down forward 1s are important for any character's offense because of their speed. Lily's down forward 1, despite the great frames, should be used carefully because it's linear and has bad range. It's slightly worse than it was in tag 2. Down 3 is her main low poke for chip damage together with the generic down 4. It's great for keeping the opponents on their toes at medium range, which is Lily's preferred range to stay in. It's her main Okizami tool tracks to her left, but after frame advantage it tracks to her right side too, which is her weaker side. It gives a mini combo with down 4 on floated opponents. Forward 4-4, four four, aka Root of Evil, especially online, is her main power low. It's very safe at minus 12, so it cannot be launched and gives Lily nice advantage and positioning in the opponent's face for more pressure. She can enter back turn stance with forward 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 back for more options and tracking. She gets a free back turn 1-2 on counter hit, but committing to back turn stance after forward 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 too often doesn't favor Lily in the long run, 
since it becomes launch punishable instead of being minus 12. Try being unpredictable with forward forward 4 and its timing because although it's quite fast, 23 frames fast lows are considered seeable, especially offline. Some of my favorite follow-ups are jabs, down forward 4 and down 2 2 for a quick poke, stack track, up forward 3 for tracking to her left and interrupting most of the opponent's retaliation, back turn 2 for being a safe, fast, knockdown mid counter hit launcher that tracks to her weak side, and back turn 1 plus 2, a linear mid launcher that is uninterruptible after retaliation. Down forward 3 is a counter hit launcher and her main oppressive chunky mid which also forces crouch on block and on hit. If your opponents like to press buttons after down for 3 on block, 1-2 is a nice frame trap without too much risk involved, 1 plus 2 frame traps and tracks to her right, and forward 1 plus 2 is safe but linear and counter hits for a free follow up. Quarter circle forward 3 plus 4, her signature high homing move, is the reason why players will attempt to duck Lily sometimes. It doesn't knock down anymore as of season 3, but because of the huge plus frames on hit, you are free to continue your offense. A down forward 3 is uninterruptible and unsteppable, and the opponent can't even low parry a down 4. It's very scary on block 2. On block, up forward 3 works as a frame trap that cannot be stepped nor walked to Lily's left. My favorite follow ups on block are down forward 4, which is safe, unsteppable by most characters, and frame traps for a guaranteed counter hit confirmable follow up, then jabs for their great frames and they somewhat restrict stepping, or down 3 and other pressure tools for variety. At the wall, a forward 4 is safe, tracks slightly at tip range, and the opponent's retaliation options are greatly limited. Sidestep 1 plus 2 has some evasion, counter hit launches, and is only minus 2 on block, which means that Lily could still keep up her pressure. Forward 4 is another safe, chunky mid with great range and some tracking at tip range. As we already said, it's good for frame traps, okizemi, and especially for wall pressure. Forward 3 is her main homing move after quarter circle forward 3 plus 4. It's a slow knee attack, and therefore the range is smaller than it looks like it should be, but it wall spots. Back one is a slow ish mid poke with very slight tracking to her left and many possibilities. The move has frame advantage on block if Freely goes to do glide by holding forward and then it also becomes plus 8 on hit. You can cancel the do glide by pressing up during the animation to get a sidestep and then back to block if you wish to pressure with her tools from neutral. The extension 4 is minus 11 and has some tracking. It can be delayed, but the delayed version is not natural on normal hit. It was plus from pretty far as well. Down forward 3 plus 4 is a long ranged mid launcher with interesting properties, to say the least. Sometimes it crushes lows. At certain parts of the animation it evades highs, but sometimes it can be floated by highs. It hits grounded, it's linear but sometimes clips people stepping and is semi-safe on block. On block with pushback, duck jabs won't reach her but they are guaranteed at close range unless Lily does down for 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4 or back turn 3 plus 4 to crush the jab. These two options can be stepped or floated with quick highs and mids. Lily can go under jabs with moves like back turn down 4, back turn down 2, back turn down 3 plus 4, 
or simply duck under them. And then we have her Rage Drive. Her Rage Drive is great. It's quite slow, but it is a safe mid launcher that's also homing, so it solves Lily's major weaknesses. This is the reason why experienced opponents won't duck nor step Lily in rage, but will try to float her with pokes. The boss frames are handy especially at the wall because there is no pushback. The second hit can be ducked on wave, so be careful. Lily has a quarter circle forward motion called Dew Glide, which can be used in very creative ways and has some built in evasion. She can't block during Dew Glide though. All of her Dew Glide moves have built in evasiveness. We already talked about quarter circle forward D plus 4, but she has other Dew Glide moves such as quarter circle forward 1 2 and natural mid mid string with great range, evasiveness and it is best used as a whiff punisher. The first hit has a little bit of tracking and it can be used as a risky poke at mid range. You can delay the second hit for a long time for a counter hit launch attempt or cancel it with quarter circle forward 1-2 back. This transition is launch punishable though. Quarter circle forward 2-1 is another mid-mid natural string and the first hit is homing. The second hit is delayable, although not guaranteed on full delay. Nothing is guaranteed on knockdown in the open unless Lily is closer to the wall. Then she has quarter circle forward 4, which is basically her while standing 4 from Dew Glide. I like to use this as a folk sometimes. She can also do quarter circle forward 3, which is her wall standing 3. And, as, and she can do full crouch down for 3, but you have to press down, down forward, forward plus 3, instead of down, down forward, forward 3, because that way you will get a wall standing 3. From Duke Light, she can also perform moves with an up input, such as up back 1 or up forward 3 plus 4. Lily can enter full crouch from Dew Glide, but not if you transition into Dew Glide from a move. The input is down, down forward, with an emphasis on holding down forward for a little longer instead of the normal down, down forward, forward version. This version of Dew Glide also has more evasion since she enters full crouch and she can perform her other wall standing moves as well as full crouch down forward 1, a safe mid wall splat tool with some evasion. If you don't hold down forward for long enough, you will get a duck jab instead. The longer you hold down forward, the more range and tracking her moves get, due to her dashing forward more to realign with the opponent. Wall standing 2 and wall standing 1 are mainly used in combos, but can surprise the opponent in the neutral too. She can transition to do glide by holding forward from a couple of moves. From back 1, forward for 3, 3-2, three, back to 1, which is a natural high mid poke string, and up 3 and up 3-3, three, three. but these are used only in combos. To perform full crouch down for 3, you hold forward plus 3 after the do glide transition instead of pressing forward and pressing 3 afterwards. That way she gets a wall standing 3 instead. The transition gives these moves better frames, that's why really players always pressure at least with do glide cancels. Do glide cancels are performed by you uh, doing a move that transitions into do glide such as back one, then hold forward, and while she's in do glide, you press up so that Lily would perform a sidestep, and then quickly hold back to block. The best do glide transition is from back one because it's plus one amok. Forward four three is unsafe on its own, but becomes safe with a do glide cancel. 
Forward forward 3 3 plus 4 is a great chunky string to throw out once in a while. It's natural only on counter hit, but it's safe on block. It stops people from pressing buttons after forward forward 3 and gives a guaranteed ground hit. It is vulnerable to sidestep though. 3 2 is a poke string. The 2 is a high, but 3 on its own has great tracking to Lily's left. This is why I love using it as a poke. But you have to mix it up with using standing 3 on its own or even 3 1. It's better at the wall because 3 1 is a wall bounce. You can use 3 1 occasionally outside of punishment since 3 1 is the 15 frames past uh, wall bounce string, so it's really fast for Lily even though it's unsafe. Not to mention that 3 has a great hitbox, so it hits senses like AOP. She also has 3-2-3. Three, three. The last hit is a duckable but safe on block high and conditions opponents not to press buttons after 3-2. Three, the 3 is guaranteed if the 2 counter hits, meaning once they try to punish you for doing standing 3 on its own. The back to one do glide transition is the riskiest one. Everything she does here on block loses to launchers, however back to one is still a decent poke on its own. The first hit has a terrible hitbox, the second hit has a much better hitbox, sometimes it clips people stepping as well. You can delay the second hit as well as the third hit 1 plus 2. If the two counter hits, the last hit is guaranteed but only if you don't delay it. It is safer to just cancel the dude glide or to go to back turn stands with much better options. Let's go over other use almost she has now. Down forward 4 is a mid poke used for its tracking to the least right and because of the delayable follow up being count hit conformable and natural only on counter hit. You can finish the string occasionally even without a counter hit to discourage opponents from pressing buttons as down forward 4 on its own kills Lily's momentum on block. It's good for Oki sometimes and tracks both ways in certain situations. Down to 2 is similar to down forward 4 due to its tracking and similar speed. It's mid-high but can be ducked only on delay. The first hit is safe, but the second one is unsafe. Both hits are natural even on full delay. To discourage opponents from punishing the second hit, Lily has a mid extension that is minus 17 on block with some pushback and a safe high extension that has good recovery on block. Both these extensions are natural if the second hit counter hits. All hits are delayable. If you ever float an opponent with down to 2, just simply finish the string with 3 for a combo. Forward 1 plus 2 is a 14 frame mid poke and counter hit tool with guaranteed follow ups, but it's linear and minus 5 on block, so it can slow down your momentum. A cheesy, seeable low is down back 3 plus 4. It's linear but goes under highs. A full crouch down foot one is guaranteed versus bears on hit, but it's great anyway versus every character as it hits every wake up option other than staying on the ground. While forward 2 3 is a punisher, you can use forward 2 on its own as a quick poke that tracks very well to Lily's weak side. Up 4 3 plus 4 is a quick linear mid poke. It's great for low crushing as it's safe and advances forward. The 3 plus 4 extension is used only for a back turn punch. The 3 extension is sort of hit conformable, safe, knocks down on counter hit, but it's a duckable high. In 2 3 and 1 2 3, the, the lows have the same properties, but the low is natural only after the 2 jab. Because these lows are minus on hit, 
They are best used after jabs are blocked to catch people stepping or pressing buttons for a knockdown and guaranteed down 3 or okizame like forward 4, forward forward 4 or sidestep 3 to flip them over. While the mid extension 1 2 4 is not a true mix up to the low due to fuzzy guarding, you can throw it out once in a while to catch opponents off guard, even though it's steppable and uh, an interruptible after jabs on block. A back one is a counter hit launcher that is minus 5 on block, so it kind of kills momentum. Its range is bad and it's linear. The only advantage this move has over down 4 3 is the speed. It's best used at plus 8 frames advantage against opponents who try to interrupt or step Lily since her key tools are so slow. While down 4 2 and up 4 3 are unsafe launchers, they do have good range and some tracking. Down 4 2 has slight tracking to Lily's right and up 4 3 to her left. Then she has forward 3 plus 4 a low crushing mid that hits grounded and has good recovery on block and is a safe launcher on floor break stages. Bowen 3 plus 4 3 is an extension that is safe on block and is a launcher but can be interrupted and the 4 extension afterwards can be hit confirmed and delayed in the open for max damage. A pretty good move is sidestep 1 plus 2, a mid counter hit launcher with some evasion. I love this at the wall because it's only minus 2 on block. After frame advantage at the wall, it can avoid the opponent's retaliation instead of you having to risk an unsafe, quicker wall splat move. Sidestep 3 yields guaranteed follow ups like forward 4 or forward 3 plus 4. After forward 3 plus 4, down 3 and standing 3 are great options. It can also punish some strings like Gizu Squad or Super Back, two mix ups. Up forward 4 3 is her second less useful wall bounce. It's safe, but linear and slow, and the second hit can be stepped. But it crushes lows, and the first hit can hit grounded. Another home move she has is forward forward 1 plus 2, but the frames on forward 3 are much better. I like the second and third spin against opponents that respect me. You can catch tech rolls after a screw with the unblockable, but this is just a gimmick. Lily has to commit to spinning sooner than the opponent falls to the ground, meaning they can just see if Lily starts spinning and react to the setup accordingly. She cannot cancel the unblockable either. Back 3 and back 4 are called bunny hop. These have some evasion, but they are pretty much useless. She has two moves out of this, three which is a low, and four is a mid, but it's a very useless mix-up. The three gives Lily a guaranteed wall standing three at the wall, so you know you may you may you may get lucky and land it on the opponent once in a while. Lily's keep out tools are risky, but she still has a couple to choose from. Let's talk about them. Up 4 is a fast defensive hop kick that launches in counter hit. It has some pushback, so it can be hard to punish. Standing 3 resembles a keep out poke. It has a very low hitbox, good pushback, and has great tracking to her left. It's used as an, as an Okizami tool as well. It's unsafe, but can be hard to punish at tip range. Downback 3 is a, is a safe, slow counter hit launching, high homing move with terrible range, but it does yield free ground hits on hit and can be a normal hit launcher of Vexus. This move is a true high crush. It goes even under electrics while Matterhorn doesn't. That's why I love this as a defensive move versus characters with strong highs. Back 2 plus 4 is her punch parry. While the active frames aren't great, it can be great in some matchups. Back 1 plus 2 is a backswing blow, but doesn't avoid much. 
It's best used for punishing Leo's back one four. Down one plus two is one of her power crushes, but the damage is so low, you might end up absorbing more damage than you deal. It's linear, has bad range, a weird hitbox, and knocks down too far for Okizemi. It's best to use near a wall where you do get Okizemi with guaranteed hits or wake up setups. It's even better for a wall spot. Forward 4 2 is a power crush launcher, but it's too slow for being used under pressure. I like to delay the forward forward to make it track more and use it when I expect my opponent to step and press buttons immediately. Down back 4 is her sneakage. It's best to use as a panic tool for its crushing properties against overly aggressive opponents. Down 3 plus 4, aka Matterhorn, is another panic tool if used outside of punishment. This goes under some mids, but doesn't go under some highs like ADGF, so it's not a true crushing move. Lily also has a backturn stance. My favorite back turn transitions are forward 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 back, back 2 on back. I like to enter back turn stance manually with back 3 plus 4, especially after a knockdown. Or after her back turn combo and ender at the wall. Another good way of entering back turn stance is down 4 3 plus 4 3 plus 4. This is her most reliable and simplest combo ender. This yields a 50-50 on wake up, but only if you land down for 3 plus 4, 3 plus 4 on its own in the open, or as a combo en ender, but at the wall. Let's go over her best moves from back turn stance. Back turn 2 is a 15 pin counter hit launcher. It tracks to Lily's right, and it's great for a wall spot. Back turn 1 plus 2 is a 13 frame mid launcher. It's minus 10 in block, but puts the opponent into a full crouch state, where most most characters will only get a duck jab as a punisher, but some characters do get really chunky punishers. Back turn down 4 is a low poke, which is plus 3 on hit. Many opponents don't realize that it's plus on hit. They think it's the same as a generic down 4 from neutral stance. That version is minus on hit. After a back turn down 4, a wall standing fork works as a frame trap, and full crouch down for 1 can be used as a frame trap as well, since it goes under some jabs and even under some magic boards, and it trades with 12 frame moves. Back turn down 3 is a great round ender. The mid follow up back turn down to 4 is natural only on counter hit. It hits grounded for good damage at the wall, although the second hit can be tech rolled in between. It also has some tracking to her left and has built-in evasion. Back turn down to plus 4 is a homing evasive low that staggers on block and gives a mini combo. Sometimes with the right positioning, Lily can get a full combo if you hold forward after back turn down 3 plus 4 and do down 1, 2, 4 as a screw. Her back turn mix up can be countered by correct movement. Back turn 3 plus 4 is a long-ranged, linear, mid-low crushing move. The extension 2 is natural only on non-delay, and the second hit counter hit launches. 3 plus 4 on its own can get you out of some otherwise guaranteed back turn setups.
disappearing dust. Ha ha, inviolable love. Ha ha, the sky is almost red. Ha, spread.